Only Cooper Cup has been targeted more than him since the last eight games of the season. I'm Ron St. Brown. The Sun God has been balling. He'll take a step back. Oh, he's going to do this. Yeah, he's going to do that. The Sun God. Throwing around doing godlike things in the middle of the field. He's doing things that nobody has done before. Now it's like he's just being a dog and yeah. going out there and balling. He's the real deal, man. Finally, some good news. And it comes by Finally, from, from the God. Lord. From a god himself. Amon Ra St. Brown, the sun god. Breaking records, Spinny. Yes. Seven straight games with eight receptions, and which I, th- I believe is tied for the most. Yeah, eight plus receptions, seven straight games. Here we it go. It is right the here. third longest streak in the NFL history. He's had five straight games of eight receptions and a touchdown, which is tied for the longest streak in NFL history. And his five straight games with a receiving touchdown ties him for second in team history. So that guy, Amon Ra, is out there making plays. Like I said, beginning of the season, everybody thought, oh, he's going to take a step back. Oh, he's going to do this. He's going to do that. He is going to get the most consistent targets, and he will have eight to ten catches every single game this year. Yeah. Because that's, dude, when, when... when Jared Goff doesn't know what to do, when he gets a little flustered, where's Amon Ra? Where's mm-hmm. Amon Ra? And he's always right there. And he did have a drop or two in, in, in those games, which is it's sad for me to see because I love that stat. But, you know, he bounced back from it, went out there, and had a good game. So I'm very happy for Amon Ra. I'm excited for him. This The sun god. The sun god went out there and did what he needed to do. So I'm, I'm excited for him. I think he's going to have a big year, and hopefully he can crack that Pro Bowl roster this year. Hey, that, that'd be that'd be good news for him, and I'd be happy for him too because Pro Bowlers get a check, don't they? Yeah, they get a bonus for sure. Yeah, he deserves that, man. Fourth-round pick. You know his contract's not the biggest, but yeah, yeah, I'm Ron St. Brown. The sun god has been balling. And, and real quick, too, I'm happy I got this solo cam. And if, you, if you're watching, shout-out to my guy Mike. Shout-out to my guy Rodney. But at the same time, I want to – you know, flip you these. You know, say I know the Detroit Lions, but I gotta show you these birds, all right? Because during our fantasy draft, when I I, I reached for Amara St. Brown, but you look at the statistics. Only Cooper Cup has been targeted more than him since the last eight games of the season of of last year. You know, say and. and we said at the beginning of the year, too, like you said, Amara St. Brown, we told you guys he was going to be a dog. We, you heard Jared Goff himself say, when I'm under the rest, that's the guy I'm looking to. You know what I'm saying? He, he's, yeah. he's a sure-handed guy. He's a dog on the team. Not to say there aren't other dogs on the team, but he's got the most rapport at this point with Amara, the sun guy. Now, I know he played with Josh Reynolds previously in L.A., but Josh Reynolds, for keeping it a buck, I'm not trying to be disrespectful about it, but he rode the pine a little bit back in L.A. You know what I'm saying? He rode the pine in Tennessee, and Tennessee doesn't have the greatest wide receiving core. I know A.J. Brown was there at one point, but they, they literally cut him, and that's why we have him here now on our team. Uh, Amaran St. Brown, he, he's the real deal, man. I think is, – is there – I mean, there's no more pro comps at this point. He's himself. He's, he is his own guy. But is there a – are we still making the Heinz Ward comparisons? Is that, like, where we're going with this one or what? Yeah, I say Heinz Ward is a good one. I, I like Golden Tate. You see a lot of that. The dude does get a lot of catches. He may he's a lot of – you know, short yardage guys. I think Adam Thielen is is another one that, that comes to mind. I don't think he's on Cooper Cup level yet because, you know, Cooper Cup is, is something else. Like, that guy had one of the best receiving seasons of all time last year. So. Yeah. Uh, and we saw what he did in the first game. He went out there and got, like, 13 catches for 100-something yards and a touchdown. So, I, I expect him to, to keep doing that, keep producing. And, yeah, he's going to be one of those high-volume slot guys that we see. And that, that can make a team that can get mismatches in this league that can go out there and, and break down some coverages. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited for him too, man. I, and I, we've been saying this in the offseason as well too, man. Like we have the pieces around him to where he could be like utilized the most as well with, with DJ Chark taking guys deep, running a 4 4 4 3. I don't remember when he ran the front combine, but he's goddamn fast. Also 6 4. We saw it in the red zone. We, Yank that bitch down from Darius mm-hmm. Slay. That, that was nasty. Uh, obviously, when Jameson Williams comes back, I mean, Josh Reynolds playing that role right now, but you know, let those guys get that extra attention from the safeties when they're trying to take the top off. And then you have Amaran St. Brown floating around doing godlike things in the middle of the field. You know, and it, it, he'd be breaking tackles too. Like, I'm not going to say Golden Tate, but like, that's the last guy doing it for us, at least, yeah. you know, before then Calvin. But Calvin was just a monster of a man. Um, I, I know you're just kind of like jumping into football a little bit, sus. And watching mm-hmm. Detroit Lions, what was, I guess, your perception of Amon Ross St. Brown this past week? And actually, the offense as a whole, like, or the team as a whole, like, yeah. is it good? Or like, how are you feeling? Uh, honestly, I came away with this week with mixed feelings because I was happy about the defense. Like, I was, I was surprised and 
look forward to what the defense has to offer now more than I was coming into the season. And then offensively, it was it was a little inconsistent. I was less about I was less high on golf than I than I was coming into the season. But Amin Ra was one of the people that absolutely jumped out. I was watching the game with my boy, and I was telling him, you know, this is the guy that this is the guy that I keep hearing about. This is the guy that you know through hard knocks, through all the talks that we've had, all the conversations we've had, that this is the guy that seems like the one to really stand out and. He looked that way. He he looked like whenever it was going to him, I expected positive results. Like every yeah. time he was targeted, even though he did have, like you said, those those two drops. But every time he was targeted, I just I had I had faith. And the last time I had that, again, I'm not a football guy, but the last time I had that was when we had Calvin Johnson. Not saying he is Calvin Johnson. Yeah. Just saying that that was the thing that I just knew as a blind football fan. Oh, throw to Calvin. This is probably going to end well. Make it for yeah. disabled people. And know, we, huh? we've had we've had some some good receivers since then. You know, obviously that have shown out and done things. But Amon Ra is uh, statistically one of the most consistent receivers since he's been in the league. I know it's only been one year, but still he's doing things that nobody has done before. He's doing things that only three people have done before. He's going out there. He's putting his stamp on the season. So I'm excited for it. I think he's going to continue to do it because he hasn't shown us any reason to doubt him he hasn't shown us any thought that he's not going to go out there and catch you know five to ten balls he's not going to go out there and, and win on routes and get these open targets so I, i'm excited for him man i love amon Ra too he's a great guy obviously we know john brown his dad is the man so I, i'm rooting for him i hope he does well jb how you feeling about amon Ra? you think he can be this guy that he's, he's he's been started off his season career you think he can be that forever i think so I definitely think so. And if you just think about it, this upcoming Sunday when they face the Commanders, all he needs is, what, eight catches and a touchdown, and he has this new record, which I think it's possible. I, I honestly think it's possible that he can do that. And commenting off of uh, Young Suss's comments from Sunday, if I had to pick somebody that I was fully impressed with, it had to be DeAndre Swift for me. No yeah. disrespect to Amon Ra, yeah, sure. yeah. but it had to be swift because i was still a little skeptical on him going into the season swift but, went crazy but yeah he went crazy and now i have no doubts about him right now it's easily 100 yards through the air and on the ground if he can stay healthy for me facts facts <laughs> no on the chest is owen looks like a young kid with his dad's shirt t-shirt on. <laughs> I, ch- I don't know during the break i said hey we, we can change that because we gotta get young sauce and in, in one now too in the heavyweight shirt, but Amara's son, God, he, he's him. I, I, I never understood the, the, the sophomore slump stuff. I think he had his slump and you know, coming to a starter because he didn't start a lot of games. He got a little bit of PT in the beginning of the year last year, and we heard some you know rumblings out of camp him him getting to it with Jeff Okuda because you know the two of them are obviously ultra competitive, and mm-hmm. you love to hear that stuff. But he is the dog that we've learned him to be. You know, coming off of last season, Amara St. Brown's a real deal, and yeah, I, I think I, I think I expect him to. to now that's the one thing about this actually. I'm gonna knock on wood a little bit too, because I don't want to like curse him because he's been doing this quietly. You know what I'm saying that no yeah. one's really talking about this stuff. We see it and we know he's doing well, but these records, uh, the the Cooper Cup and targets, you know what I'm saying, just only being behind him since I think it was week eight of last year. Like we're not really talking about that. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just kind of just witnessing it happen. So I don't want any like extra added pressure to to get these records or anything like that. Because I, right now I just feel like he's just being a dog and yeah. going out there and balling. The sun god. The sun god! Yeah.